Dearly beloved of God, praise the Lord. I'm so happy, happy, happy again to be before you sharing his word. Let us pray. Father God, who is in heaven, thank you for the opportunities that you give us. And we pray, Father, that we are talking about individual responsibility and reading the book of Prophet Ezekiel. Pray the Lord you bless us because you desire no death of a sinner, but to repent and live. We pray that you'll bless us even in our generation that we shall live our life pleasing to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, welcome and we thank God. Ever, ever, ever thankful to God for the opportunities that he gives us each moment the guidance that he gives us through his word, but also through the people that he has appointed to deliver the guidance. We want to say that God cares about us. God loves us. And so he used men and women to deliver his word. The reason why these words were written in this book like I've always said, for our edification. And so that it can be justified before him. And so we opened the book of Prophet Ezekiel. The prophet that God used to speak his message even while they were in exile. And we learned that actually we need every time that we're in a situation to look beyond the situation in which we are, to keep trusting God for the better, lifting our eyes into the heaven, lifting our eyes above the situation. So Ezekiel comes and speaks to the people that were suffering, that were in exile, but he was delivering the message like prophet Isaiah did, like prophet Jeremiah did, now Ezekiel does. So let us now think about individual responsibility. Have you ever thought about it? Reading together Ezekiel chapter 18, it's a chapter that has edified me, and I pray that actually it edifies you. If you have done that, may it remind you of one or two, three things. So in chapter 18, prophet Ezekiel, just a few verses that will guide our interaction. The word of the Lord came to me. Before we read on friends, I have been amazed at the way the man speaks. The word of the Lord came to me. The word of the Lord came to me. You can count the times. There are so many in this book, right from chapter one, that actually everything that Jeremiah spoke were not his own words, but the word of the Lord. And so as I read chapter 18, verse 1, what comes to my mind very, very quickly to say is those of us who say we are prophets, who say we are preachers of the word, whose word, you'll discover that when you put a yardstick, many preachers preach their own, the gospel that people's ears want to hear. But listen to this man, Ezekiel, puts it very clear. The word of the Lord came to me. And when you read this entire book, begin from chapter one, you can just re read chapter one, verse one, and then on, you'll find the word of the Lord came, chapter two, the word of the Lord came, chapter four, chapter five, chapter six, on, 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 on. Where he's not mentioning it, he's just continuing the story. But where he begins a new story, he says, the word of the Lord came to me. And so friends, this is a message that actually we who are in our generation now need also to take very seriously. That the word that we speak, if we prefer to be speaking for God, then it should be God's word. But analysis, you'll discover that when someone wants to speak the word that people want to hear. If they want to hear about a certain event, a certain something, they will go with that one so that people clap their hands for them, so that people will relate for them. But listen to me, 
Ezekiel leaves us a message that the word of the Lord came to me. So what, which word came? In verse 2, what do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, declares the Lord, this proverb shall no longer, no more be used by you next in Israel. Behold, verse 4, behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the father as well as the soul of the son is mine. The soul who sins shall die. And so friends, this is the message. The soul who sins shall die. If a man is righteous and does not and does what is just and right, if he does not eat upon the mountains or lift up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, does not defile his neighbor's wife or approach a woman in her time of menstrual impurity, does not oppress anyone but restores to the data, his pledge, commits no robbery, gives his bread to the hungry, and covers the naked with a garment, does not lend at interest, or take any profit, withholds his hand from injustice, executes true justice between man and man, walks in my statutes, and keeps my rules by acting faithfully he is righteous executes justice between man and man walks in my statutes and keeps my rules by acting faithfully he is righteous that's verse 9 he shall surely live he shall surely live that's verse 9 declares the lord now friends these makes the message the soul that sins shall die and the bible says that all souls mine and yours mine and my wife's soul mine and my children's soul mine and my neighbor's soul all of them each each pray the lord each belongs to god and he says, the one that sins shall die. And of course, theology will keep interpreting this, referring to this, referring to that. But here, as these people were in exile, they were quoting, actually, their fathers, their parents are the ones that sinned. And therefore, they are the ones who are suffering. And of course, actually, some of the people now will dive into the theology of the original scene, the theology of, but now here we're talking about the theology of individual sin. So the righteous of the righteous shall be on himself or herself. The wickedness of the wicked shall be on himself or herself. Now, according to this portion of scripture, God holds each individual, God holds each one accountable for his or her own conduct. And the reason why we are talking about individual responsibility, if you lived yesterday, if you're living today, if you live tomorrow, living L-I-V-E, may God enable you to know that what you do, your actions will give you life, and your actions can lead you to suffering. Now, in here, Ezekiel was reminding his, the exiles, fellow exiles, because remember that he was also himself there. He wanted to remind them that actually they should not shift the blame. No complaining by the exiles that actually because of what those others did that they are in exile. But I wanted to tell them that even you, you have a share in what the situation that is now. Of course, 
things that happened yesterday, the bad habits that people did yesterday, the bad things that the people did times past, they could affect us, but they should not blind our eyes to our own actions. And to me, this is the point that okay, this man is, is saying, that what they did, what they said, how they acted, yes, they did that. But the thing is, it should not blind our eyes to our own iniquities, to our own actions, to our own bad doings. But we should be should look at ourselves as responsible for what we are doing. And so the reason why in verse 4, it says, Behold, behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the father as well as the soul of the son is mine. So the soul who sins shall die. And so I, when I was thinking through it, I said, well, God help me as a person. Of course, I have children. I have a wife. I have parents, I have relatives, I have brothers, I have sisters, I have many people around me. But in those very many people, like you do, you also have people around you. But each one, we pray that actually each one will be responsible for their own actions. People who live knowing that this is good, this is not bad, this is not good, this is good, this is bad, this is bad. And each one is conscious to navigate through this life. You will find a family standing. You'll find a family praising and happy, but one of them deviating actually may, you know, uh, things may not go right with that person. And so I pray that actually God enables us. Like Ezekiel was reminding the exiles, no shifting blame. There are people who keep shifting blames to other people. There are people who keep complaining all the time. Complaining. Yes, I also do. But we need, we are called upon to repent. They're actually complaining, but we need to change. Instead of complaining, we need to change. Instead of shifting blame, we need to concentrate and do our part. And so what Ezekiel was trying to say is, in this situation, what is your contribution? In this situation, what are you doing? In this situation, how are you going about the, the business now? So what are the implications of apportioning blame? Or rather, shying away from our responsibility of our own actions when things go wrong. You know, it will belong to nobody. And so what we do is we need to remember Ezekiel's message in chapter 18. The very first one is Ezekiel condemned the Proverbs that um, we suffer because of others. Yes, it could be true, but the new concept Ezekiel is introducing is the righteous will live for his righteousness. The concept is the wicked will die for his unrighteous works, for his wickedness. The reason why each one will be held responsible, the parent will be held responsible for his or her own sins, and the child will, now including the neighbor, including everyone. So this is very, very important, and this benefits those who tend to be righteous. This is important for you. If you are righteous, if you are doing something good, I urge you, I encourage you to continue doing it. Do not be deviated. Do not be, do not be you know, uh, diverted from doing right because the right that you are doing is for you. The right that you are, good, that you are doing, the good that you are doing is for you. And actually, it will also trickle down to another person. But the bad, of course, it also has that. Now, number two that I want to mention is God is not pleased when the people die due to their sins. Read this chapter 18. It's not very long, but it displeases the Lord. It hurts God to see a sinner die. And so God is not pleased. God is not happy. His desire is a sinner repents and lives. Pray the Lord. Pray the Lord that the sinner repents and lives. So this chapter 18 proves this, that my heart, my soul is not happy with anyone who dies because of their sin. And uh, he pleads that actually people should come back. People should come back and put their lives right. 
Now, the other thing that actually you will discover is God condemns self-righteousness and accumulating blame on others. There are people who thrive on apportioning blame. They don't accept their part in an argument. They don't accept their contribution in a situation, in a quarrel, in the development of a place. And they keep pointing fingers. If it had not been this, if it had not been this person, and they keep pointing fingers. But listen to me. God is not interested in your pointing of fingers. God is interested in what is your contribution in this drama, in this action? What is your contribution? And Ezekiel 1, 18, 1 to 3 shows us, gives us what we should do. And some people who keep very, very interested in apportioning posture, apportioning blame, pointing fingers, and particularly this finger that actually, this is a, that's a pointing finger. Actually, in my vernacular, I was learning actually it is, it is, it is actually for pointing. And then there is this one. That is, so the people who keep pointing, I mean, pointing fingers, not looking at their own contribution also. My psychology has helped me that actually even by merely passing around and someone feels so bad, then I need to say, oh, if I not passed here, someone know that I felt so bad. So I look at my contribution as well. That actually, oh, maybe if I not said this word, this wouldn't have happened. Or maybe if I've not opened my eyes in this way, someone know that I made a comment. Or if I not dressed this kind of way. There are some people who 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 mind about only, you know, uh, but the, the, this is they don't look at their part also in in a situation. So look at this. That individual responsibility is very, very important in our time as it was during Ezekiel's time. Now, but also, as God is not interested in the death of a sinner, God also punishes the individuals for their sins. Pray the Lord. He does. He's not happy. Sinning, dying. Wickedness, suffering. And so in chapter 20 of Exodus, we have, of course, of course, actually read this chapter and people quote this so much in verse 5, that those who hate me, those who reject me, those who do not, who choose not to obey will be the ones to die. And now this Exodus chapter 20, verse 5, let me just dive there very, very quickly to find it. If uh, I, 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 I should, yes, I should have found it, that 20... Um, verses 5 to 6, you shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers to the children. Now, this is, it was the transformation of this verse here. So Ezekiel was looking at it, actually God is visiting. Now the new theology comes and says, a soul that sins will be the soul to die. And so he says, visiting the iniquity of the father and the children to the third and fourth generation of those who those who, pray the Lord, those who hate me. Now, when you read that, but this verse here, you discover that actually God is actually getting back, even when it was visiting the iniquity of the fathers on their children, but then he's saying, those who hate me. Look at those who hate me. It is those that actually will stand for their own iniquity. And so, in the Deuteronomy, verse 24, verse 16, you discover that the same thing. God also speaks something that, that parents shall not be put to death for their children. Nor shall children be put to death for their parents. Only for their crimes may a person be put to death. Now, when you get back to all this, God specifies those who hate me, those who who disobey me, meaning that actually you do wrong, you who hates the Lord, you who does wickedness, you die for your sins. And so this is important, this theology that is developed by prophet Ezekiel has helped me to have my part, to stand as me, to walk as me, and 
look at my responsibility in the environment in which I'm serving, in the situation in which I'm serving, what am I contributing? What am I doing as a family man, as a family person, as a worker, as a servant in the house of the Lord, me as me, you as you, what is your contribution? What is your responsibility? This is something that actually we need. And these days people want to run away from individual responsibility. They want to do things. They want to point fingers. They don't see their own contribution in a situation that has arisen. Now, this is very, very important. And so, as I tend to want to the finish of this individual responsibility, and of course, actually, I have maybe many interpretations, many things to talk about, many things to think about. Yes, you are free to keep thinking through and posing questions that come to your mind about this portion of scripture. But God is talking about individual responsibility. Now, as I wind up, God is showing us through Ezekiel chapter, 12, chapter 18 that it is possible, it is possible to convert from sin to righteousness. It is possible to, to transform. The reason why generations after generations we talk about transforming, moving away from wickedness to the time, to the things that please God. It is possible to convert from but also, it's also possible to convert from righteousness to sin. So when you talk about conversion, we're not only talking conversion, talking about conversion from negative to positive, the bad to good. We praise the Lord for the people that change and move from bad to good. Once upon a time, thieves. Once upon a time, robbers. Once upon a time, cheats. Once upon a time, lazy people transformed, changed to become, you know, important, useful people in society. We praise the Lord. But also, the Bible is talking about those that God also, um, it is also possible, it's also possible for someone to convert from being good to bad. And that is what hurts the heart of God. That if you have been a faithful husband, if you have been a faithful father, if you have been a faithful worker, and you deviate, and you go the other way, it displeases God. But it's also possible that someone can transform that convert from being a nice person to a bad one. But my prayer, friends, my prayer is that we should maintain goodness, we maintain righteousness, we maintain fellowship together in love of God than converting to evil converting to bad, converting to evil actions and acts. So this one, individuals cannot be bound by their former sins also. This is something also very, very important. As long as you have transformed yourself, as, a fool, as long as you have repented, we cannot be bound. Now, the, the, the ideas that I've brought in this is, one, it is possible for someone to convert from sin to good from bad to good. That's very important. Two, that's also possible for someone to convert from good to bad. And that's the bad one. And we pray, we pray against it. That actually nobody will transform from good to bad. But also, another idea that comes up is that actually you cannot be bound by your former sins. There are some people who still hold others, hold them in the past. Hold them by the past story. You never know. Someone might have been transformed from bad to good. And the reason why testimony time is very important. You give someone time to tell their story. That listen, brethren, I used to walk this way. I used to do things this way. But I thank God who has saved me. And I no longer steal. I no longer act wickedly. I am now a transformed person. So someone who is a transformed person, we should not hold them in the evil, in the, in the past. God desires a sinner not to, to, not to die, but what? Live. So this is very, very, also very, comes out very, very clearly in this book. So uh, we pray that, um, but also one other thing that I want to, to finish up with there is we can also not also be exonerated by our former righteousness. Someone might have been a good person in the past, but as time goes on, someone deviates. So the good that you did yesterday 
and the bad that you are doing today. So what is what you are doing today will erase what you did, the good that you did yesterday. So what we are saying is we need to continue being careful, being careful, being watchful of our actions, of our words, everything that we do actually being facing God word. And this, uh, for me, this is very critical, very, very important, friends, that as we read chapter 18 of Ezekiel, verses 1 and following. So, which they use, quit the use of the proverb. Stop blame shifting. Evading responsibility. Running away from your responsibility in an action, in a situation. Now, God declares his lordship over each and every individual soul. Behold, all souls are mine. And so, friends, I thank God for this scripture. And we have learned something, and I pray for you, and I pray for myself, that all souls belong to God. Mine does belong to God. Yours belongs to God as well. And so we pray that actually God will enable us to live according to scripture and that God will give us his grace not to shift, but to, to be on forward move in goodness, in righteousness and back down there should lie wickedness. Leave them and then move forward. And so may God help you, may God help me and so we remove our journey uh, in faithfulness, in righteousness, in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God be with you.